nobody meant to make a mess of it all. It just seemed to work out that way. Everyone was so busy trying to trick everyone else that they all ended up tricking themselves. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the Okefenokee Swamp, where life is kind of peaceful. But you see, there are times when it is madness, election madness, with every fool and his frog wanting Pogo Possum for president. Everyone, that is, except Pogo himself. All he wants is to go fishing with his friend Porky Pine. Like that morning when the two of them were sitting down by the sycamore tree and Porky was about to finish the very worst joke in the whole swamp. Uh, oh, I, uh, I forgot what the mom was saying. There's a boy howling, ripe as a plum. The real madness began with Pogo's friends, Albert and Howland, arguing about how to get Pogo to run. Then Howland suggested a typical swamp solution. Grab him up, hat, head, fishing pole, the whole shooting match. We will let nothing stand in our way. <laughs> Pretty good, Porky. Imagine a man uh, talking to a moth. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny, too. You want to hear another one? Go on. Oh, I didn't think it was that bad. Hey, Howland, Albert, what's going on? Good news, Pogo, my lad. It's time to run. Now that's subtle. Run? Run from what? The presidency. So much for being subtle. Hold it. Stop the show right here. Y'all got me to run in the past, but never again. But, 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 but. Forget it. I don't even like to walk that much. Galloping grips. With reluctance like that, he's bound to win. Stop, Pogo. What's an election year without a candidate? If people don't have candidates, who are they going to vote for? Themselves? <laughs> Wait a minute. There may be something to that. <laughs> Day, my dear Deacon, nothing less than the office of the president. It is our duty to control it, to protect it from every wrong-minded do-gooder boring from within, supporting the Constitution, spreading equality, and even defending the rights of others, which will serve us no good whatsoever. Shock, shocking. But what do you propose we do? Much more than a proposal, a holy mission. We must seize the reins of power, sweeping aside those who are fool-minded enough not to know the truth as we see it. And what if they defy us? Defy us? Who bureaucratically silence them? That is, after all, the purpose of government. I'm with you to the end. Traveling with the public is useless. We must take the indirect path of true strength Act behind the scenes and see to it that a president is elected who will do as we see it. How will we get folks to vote for it? Simple. We'll choose a candidate who has all those qualities the voting public traditionally finds appealing. A devious mind. A tendency toward underhandedness. An ability to make any promise, any time, to anyone, and forget it as soon as the election is over. That sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> Nobody wants an honest president. Brilliant, my dear Deacon. I have. Just the boy for us. Free mouthed Bullock. <laughs> His specialty is words of universal appeal. Sounds a little highbrow to me. To the contrary, his entire brain could fit inside a thimble with room to spare. He is both appealing and hopelessly stupid. A perfect choice for president. Excellent, excellent. Then it's done. Our control of the presidency is assured. Eh, Moster? Not quite. Presidents are made, not elected. To be certain that our candidate will win, we must see to it that the opposition loses. But how can we be certain? We will dupe the opposition into running a candidate who is totally unacceptable to the voting public. Find me a candidate who is honest, open-minded, and never makes a false promise. And I will show you a born loser. 
I've got it. I've got it. It's right in front of our noses. The most fair-minded critter in the entire swamp. Loyal to his friends. Open to all he greets. Yes, yes. Who is The dupe we want is Pogo. I think I'm stuck. That's it. Oh, lovely. Say cheese. Which kind? Woo-hoo. Watch the chicken. Oh, dang, Mabbit. I dropped my lamp. Oh. <laughs> there he is, the leading non-candidate. Oh, no, you don't. Nobody's going to want to vote for me. Most people don't vote for the candidates they do have. What makes you think they'll vote for a candidate they don't have? Ow, my head's stuck. Well, uh, maybe that's what they've been waiting for. A uh, candidate they don't have, so they don't have to vote for someone they wouldn't have voted for anyways. Uh, you follow that? You got a point there, boy. I think. Well, I don't. Every election year is the same thing. All of you change from honest, loyal, trustworthy friends into a bunch of... Well, I don't know how else to say it. Politicians. I'll take your point. Hold on. You take it back. This year, if you are my truly friend, you'll leave me completely out of this. Alone, me? apart, uninvolved. And while you're at it... Oh, lovely. Oh, well, get me out of here. Oh, that was beautiful. My dear old Pogue, I'd never, never try to get you to do something you didn't want to. No way. <clears throat> no, sir. After all, I is your true blue friend. Uh, make that true green friend. This is ridiculous. Not so fast. I consider it Pogo's patriotic duty to run. After all, the swamp is filled with circles of Pogo followers waiting to follow their one and only leader. Wonderful! Why, he should run as fast and as far and in as many circles as possible. You two guys, hey, what are you doing? Get your hands off me. <laughs> You're both hopeless. I'll just go where I can best be appreciated. Off by myself. Do you see what I see? Hugo is being enshrined. The candidate. Behold, Deacon. He's already one of the mighty of Mount Rushmore. That makes him the future fifth of the four past forefathers. What? And behold further, there is the tool with which to dupe the little swab into running. Are you referring to the paintbrush? I don't see how that's going to help. I'm talking about the alligator. Well, why do you want to paint the alligator? I don't want to paint Albert. It's Pogo I'm after. Ooh, the light begins to dawn. What color shall we paint Pogo? No, you fool azar. We don't want to paint Pogo. We want him to run for president. Well, of course we do, but there's only one problem. What is it? Where will we find the fool to act as our tool to dupe Pogo into running for president? There, there, the tool is right before your eyes. I think we're back to the paintbrush again. Come on, Elvis, it's funny. Look here, I'm stuck here. Congratulations, Albert. We're thrilled to hear the news. What news? Why, the grand appointment. Albert Alligator as the official secretary of the treasury. It isn't every day that humble, honest, Law-abiding folks are appointed to that post. Mm, I don't rightly recollect that Pogo ever did run, let alone get himself elected. Of course he hasn't been elected. There hasn't been an election yet, but he's a shoe-in now that you've been appointed his campaign manager. Ah, I have. Why, as soon as Pogo's won, you can expect nothing but the best. And you know how good that is. Soon there'll be nothing short of grandeur and glory for you. For me? And power for us. Grandeur, glory, power. So Albert...
Stewart got trapped in his own dream of glory. He could just see himself as the Secretary of the Treasury. And you know he liked what he saw. By George Y. Wells. Pogo is bound to remember his old friends when it comes to cabinet posts, postmasters, and such. I can roost the mail as good as anybody. And just ask me what's the state capital of North Dakota. Go ahead, ask me. Like a flash, I replies, Lincoln, Nebraska. Right on the nose. Dependable. Whoa. I beg your pardon, madam. Just vote early and vote often. <laughs> in another part of the swamp, in a big old tree, is Howland's house. And sitting under the window was a certain Churchy LaFemme. And that moment, Churchy was very busy, sleeping. Inside the house, Howland was trying to publish his newspaper, The Early Owl. Pogo has let me down. Deserted me even before my hour of need. Howland never actually knew anything new, but just like the big-time news folks, he could make up the news as fast as he could print it. Pogo wins presidency. You know, I would have scooped every paper in the country, but now we don't even know who'll be elected. Oh, for shock. Hmm. Pogo wins presidency. What? What? Oh, I, I just, I just had what you call a vision. Another Joan of Arc. You'll say friend. No, no, it was a boy saying Pogo wins presidency. Oh, it gave me the bam rushes to the head. I, oh, I, gotta, I gotta go tell somebody. Well, what do you know about that? My vision was correct. Pogo has been elected president. <laughs> Oh, Churchy LaFan! <laughs> Miserable punk rock, trip me up. Churchy LaFan, have I got news for you? Well, it's gonna have to wait, because I got even bigger news. Pogo is elected president. Pogo elected president? That's right. But I was gonna be his campaign manager, and now it's too late. It's all laid out here in black and white. Well, the least you could have done is Tell me he was running. Cut the gas. I won't have anybody running down my mock page once. You mean I've been duped by the press again? You mean there ain't been no election? And this is a fake? I'm so disappointed. Don't call my fake a fake. Give it here. So the three of them calmly and deliberately decided to join together and run Pogo for president. <clears throat> the way I look at it, uh... Pogo may not have won the presidency, but he also hasn't lost it. Cut that up. Now that makes sense, even to me. Oh, the boy's a shoe in a lead pipe sense. If Pogo's to be elected, we've got a lot of activities to activate. Slow down a minute. Hold it here. As the one and only truly self-appointed campaign manager, I will throw his hat in the ring. Uh, if I can get it away from him. Agreed. All right. The officers, uh, preferably from right here among us, then we can worry about... Hi, everybody. Boy, what are we doing? <laughs> Follow my kids. Maybe they didn't no, hear me. I'll just try again. Hi there. Uh, it's me, is old Porcupine. Select only the best among... Must be doing important things. Couldn't be very interesting, though. Not for me, anyway. <laughs> Guess I'll just go over there and watch the mushrooms grow. Her plan has the opposition candidate sewed up. <laughs> the sweet smell of victory is in the air. That certainly takes care of the presidential loser. Now, the only remaining question is, if Pogo is for president, who is for vice? Then Mole and Deacon went to see their real candidate, Fremont, who only knew two words, just fine. Restrain your cane, if you please. Don't sass me, boy. I see you for what you are. Ah! can hardly see the end of his nose, let alone the end of mine. He stole my glasses. The big one over there, with a the glove. I saw him do it. The brute caught me by surprise. There's your glasses, mister. You can't worm your way out of this one. I'll have you arrested and dragged snuff some turbo. Morning, Miss Beetle. How's little old Fremont coming along? Oh, just fine as silk, Mr. Deacon. Until a moment ago when some darn don't say. Other than that, <laughs> we're just fine. Just fine. 
Moles to Mole, I have the dubious honor of introducing you to Ms. Beetle and her aspiring candidate son, Fremount. This is indeed a pleasure, I believe. How are you folks today? Just fine. He's just a natural talking fool. Yep. Uh, when he learns something, he knows it. Like when he learned to sit down. Yes, sir. Hmm. He sits down good, does he? Yes, sir. It's a caution. Yes, sir. Uh, look, look. He's doing both at once. Amazing, my Ted. How do you feel about the race? Just fine. Nothing I like better than confidence. What do you think about inflation? Just fine. How about equality, fraternity, justice? How do you feel about those things? Just fine. Just fine. Just fine. Well, look at that. Look at that. An innate ability to sit down combined with the instinct to stand up. There hasn't been a president like that since Herbert Hoover. I believe the boy is a shoe whip. Just fine. My land. That does it then. He's the first candidate to come out fat-footed and four-square in favor of himself. Just fine. Only problem is, he kind of small to be president of the U.S. and A. Oh, Cy, don't count. Lordy knows it's what you got up here. That counts. That was sort of what I meant. Nonsense. It's a quality he'll have in common with all our greatest <laughs> leaders. I can see it all now in black and white. When America has free mount answers. Get by. Just fine. Just fine. Shouldn't there be more? Well, I thought we'd leave out the part about refusing the Nobel Prize, marrying a movie queen, carrying the country by a landslide. You know, it might sound like we're pushing it a bit. Makes sense. Besides, who's going to believe all that about a plain old southern beetle bug? Well, once we got a candidate that the press can't misquote. Just fine. On second thought, forget I said that. I tell you, that's an active candidate. Look at him fishing his head off. Calvin Coolidge fished his way into re-election. Coolidge, he fished for trout with worms. But Pogo fishes without hooks. Watch him. Look at those fishes down there. Boy, I sure would like to catch some of them. How do you figure we're going to go about it today, Porky? Well, I'll tell you this one. It ain't easy. You got to have a real knowledge of the fish. Understand, Bogo? It's all in the wrist, you know. But just like this, and blam! Snap! Don't you laugh at me. I know that lots of guys wear these things. Yeah, let's try it again. Hey. Now, do you notice that? See how straight the line is? Uh, uh, it's kind of limp. It's not straight anymore, it's limp. I, I can't imagine. Why didn't it go straight? Well, it's cheap line. I'll tell you that to begin with. Uh oh, Porky, you're getting a knot in that line there. See that tangle? No, that ain't gonna snarl me up. That is a big knot, isn't it? I'll tell you one thing. The line wasn't made in this country. <laughs> Look at that reel. That's new, isn't it, Porky? Oh, it's a dandy, ain't it? About one of the best I've ever seen. There must be four or five releases. One's fast, slow, medium. I tell you, you gotta put your pressure down here. That is, if you get a bite. All them things on. I don't know what's going on on that other side there. I ain't gonna worry about that. It's this. This is the side. Now, you see, if I was to get a bite... Oh! Oh, you know what? I got it on the wrong setting. Oh, golly, let me give you a hand, Porky. No, don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. I don't know what I'm doing. Watch out, watch out. Oh, shoot. Oh, boy, that's too bad. Well, let me have another one here. I'll get it right. Just... Give it another try. There's other fish in the pond. Look at them fish looking at us. I wonder if that guy down there realizes how early we got up this morning, Bogo. Do you know how far we come? Come on, give us a break. We want to catch one of you. Look at that. 
What's a heck of a no? That's kind of be fair. Big fish like that. Yeah, that could be hate on me. They're laughing at me. You know, Pogo, when a fish talks back, it's time to row in. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Porky. There's always tomorrow. Yeah, whatever bait we had today obviously didn't work. The line got tangled up. The reel was a little off. How about bowling? I'm go bowling. Beach taking up views from these five fish in this creek. We could make a spike in green. Put it in the black. Out of the red. We could make a bundle telling anybody whatever they want to know. Let's shoot for a million. A million? Oh. <laughs> now that's a figure to conjure with. How you gonna do that? Yeah, what kind of fool is you? <laughs> hey, on the paid one. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I'll show you. We'll take a telephone pole and sell the results to the highest bidder. Bitter than who? Bitter not asked. Watch, now I put you in the dime. Hey, our life savings. Hello? Is this the occupant? I'm making a telephone poll. Could you tell me to whom you are listening on your telephone at this very moment? Hey, she hung up on me so loud, she knocks me off my bike. Get your dime back. Food. Ah, kick the machine. At least get some gum. As Okie Finoki posters, we got a duty to find out what's on the minds of the denizens in the swamp. Yeah, and the folks who live here, too. Yeah, and Albert, too. Albert! One thing I think any campaign needs, Owl, is a big campaign war chest. I agree. My thoughts exactly. What could the presidential campaign without lots of money? How much is in our campaign fund, if you don't mind? Not at all. Not at all. Let's see. We're just short a half a million dollars. Yes, well, that's fine. Just short a half a million dollars? What? We're rich. Short a half a million? Who took it? We're Who took rich. It? Half a million you dollars. We're rich. Don't think you're going to get away with this because Look you off. won't. Take that. 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 You give it back. Give it back. Hold it. Save it. Oh, oh, oh boy. Give it back. Oh. 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 I said cut it out. Neither of you understand me. What, what do, do you mean? mean? Nobody took anything. What? Why, we never had anything to begin with. That's why we're short. In fact, not only are we short a half a million dollars, we're short a million dollars as well. Oh, no, that makes a million and a half missing. The problem is increasing every minute. Who else knows about this? Hmm. Nobody, I think. Good. And here's what you do. You burn your files, you shred your notes, and you erase your tapes. If we handle this right, and neither of you talks, we're in the clear. Don't worry about me. My beak is sealed. Besides, what fool would leak this news? Wait a minute, boys. That will still leave us one and a half million dollars short. And possibly even two. The only solution is to do some fundraising. How can you think of fun at a moment like this? Hold up there. The boys got an idea. Two million dollars is a lot of raisins. The only experience any of us has had with raisins is on top of breakfast cereal. Precisely. Therefore, I propose we bring in Mr. P.T. Bridgeport. I've heard he can talk the silver from your teeth, if you have any. Everyone agrees he is the grand expert in the field of raisins. Oh, that's fine, as long as the grand raisin expert will have our best interests at heart. You said it. There's one thing you can be sure of about old P.T. Bridgeport. Whatever interest he'll get will be as good as some, better than most. Listen to me, lads. There's one thing you can be sure of. I would consider it my patriotic duty to be of ample assistance, including every means at my disposal. Although, personally, I believe a win or loss depends entirely on the outcome. That's the spirit. One small point. There merely remains the question of a duly designated remuneration. Remuner what? Well, we had one of those, but, uh, Churchy lost it. A misunderstanding, friend Lizard. I'm referring to reimbursement of the pecuniary kind. 
Of course he is, Albert, and I agree, absolutely. What's he talking about? Uh, I can't rightly be sure. Uh, that's why he's a consultant. I will attempt just one more time with subtlety and finesse. What's it pay, boys? I thought you said he had our best interests at heart. Well, not at heart exactly. More like in his pocket. He gets interest for everything he does. Ah. Oh, interesting. Tell you what I'm gonna do for you, boys. I'll organize this whole thing for you, and it won't cost you a single cent, other than a small share of the results. Say, 70 to start and add expenses on later. Terrific. It's a deal. 70 what? What difference does it make? If he can raise 70, it's 70 more than we have now. Hurrah! I'm all for it, whatever it is. This way to the election wheel of fortune. Put your money down and pick your candidate. Invest a little, gain a lot. You may be the big winner. Five on the blue gets you a seat on the presidential commission. Ten on the red wins the ambassadorship to the Republic of Kamquat. And for a mere 20 on the green, you could win a seat on the Supreme Court. So this is how the networks get their election poll numbers. Right, and their ratings, too. Just keep flipping the ball and Togo's gonna win for sure. The red was oh, a red I like it. Yeah. Take a mind. Let's go for two I like it, I like it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. 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 Hey, everybody, come up here. Now pay attention. I've got three shells here. Harry, you notice those? What'd you say? Yes, they're all three shells. Just take my word for it. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. You're touching me, pay for them. <laughs> now, the thing is, under one of these three shells is a P. Now, first, wait just a moment. Let me have your money. Good. That's good. All right, now, is that the one you want? Are you sure? Let me change them around again. Well, I'm allowed to do that. It's my game. Here, okay? Now. George, is a P under there. Take a chance and see a little bit of life. We want Pogo. Put your money up for Pogo. A buck for Pogo is a buck well spent. Put your money down. All right, where's the money? Okay. Now, you got the game. I'm taking one look at you, and you've got the whole thing right there. This is your day. Take your shot. Hey, I know a winner when I see one. Let me tell you right now, you're going to win the whole house. Besides, we're trying to help somebody here. This is a worthy cause. What are you worrying about? Do you think I would do anything to you boys? Come on, you know me. I've been with you. A buck for Pogo was well spent because Pogo's for you. I just happen to be the man in the vortex of the occasion. Believe me, the satisfaction of walking out of here and knowing inside me that I've done something good is rewarding. And tonight, when I sleep, I'll pull the sheet up, tuck it right under my neck, look up at the sky and I'll tell myself as I think of you another day that I fool those silly bastards. Now, let's try this here. Here's one, two, three, four. Oh, there. May four moves. Quick. Oh, shoot. How'd you know that was under there? Where are you from? Are you from out of state? Try this one over here. There's a pee under there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's peas under three shells. You know, I never did get to know how to do this real good. <clears throat> well, I'm confused. I've lost every bit of money I had here today. I better turn to something else. Well, this idea is too good for them to have had alone. They appear to have the right idea, a 
although the money's going into the wrong pockets. Theirs and not ours. Look at that gambling, how terrible. Somebody has to correct their evil ways. I'll just bet five dollars to prove to them how wrong this all is. Oh, no, you won't. I've got a better way to penetrate their ranks. Motherhood. This is humiliating, Molster. Call me Babykin. Babykin. We'll give our disguise away. Well, if you insist, this is humiliating, baby kids. What we need now is an attraction for those with a bit more mature inclination. To wit, a kissing booth. Oh, that's no problem at all. Mamzelle Heptabar is the most kissable kissing in the whole swamp. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you think she'll cooperate? Oh, no problem. Just leave that to me. Uh, Miss Hepzibah? Oh, no. How about, my dear, uh, no. She might think that was too bold. Maybe I'll try, hello? I don't think you've ever really noticed me. But I have, uh, oh, heck, I'll just give her the old flowers. Oh, for me? So I told everybody that Mamzelle Hepzibah is the type to understand the needs of a presidential campaign. Good, good. Nice start. And right now, we need somebody with your, um, your, your, um... Uh, we have in mind an activity that will put to use your natural talent. Oh, but of course. I shall organize a grand deck sale featuring my famous strawberry shortcuts. Yeah, well, that's nice, but how about kiss and critters for a buck each instead? Oh, so this is what I can expect from my friends, that I should stay in a window and kiss each stranger that passes by all for the sake of money? Well, not exactly. We had more in mind, kissing each campaign contributor who passes by all for the sake of Pogo. That's easy enough. Oh, easy for you, perhaps, but for me, it is impossible. No, no. Think of Pogo. You think of Pogo. I refuse to believe that he would have anything to do with this that you do. No, no, no. Keep her going, Albert. I think she's about to give in. Boop. Oh. I'm going to sworn she was about to give in. It's all your fault. You had to lower this whole thing to a monetary level. Oh, disgraceful. Have a chocolate. Don't mind if I do. Wait a moment, my lizard-like friend. All is not lost. Remember the lady's own words. How's that? Something about it being easy for one church, you love femme. Aha! Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. No. Hey, guys, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do it. Wait a minute. No! Hey, wait! No! I am shocked to learn that there's gambling going on in this establishment. They are winning, sir. Well, I would never. Not now, you fool. Sure can be a lot of fun. Count me in whenever you like. Just as long as you don't count yourself in. How do you, how do you, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. If you see God lit another minute, and I'll tell you. Let's see. 56, <laughs> carry 9, divided by the numerator, which is 211 and 12, what's on the side, both coast on the track. Minus 
16,428. Was it? A bill? A bill for how much? Oh. A simple explanation should suffice. The bill is for damages done, services rendered, plus compound interest, carrying charges, and amortization. It was a pleasure doing business with you, boys. Cleaned out clean. That does it. Bring that campaign chest over here. Sure. What's a canvas for? We got no choice but to canvas for funds. You just watch. All right, Frog, what kind of contribution are you going to voluntarily make to this campaign? Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, here we go. Uh, there you are. Uh, I don't seem to be able to find any more at the moment. Oui. Oh, there. Now aren't you glad I was able to help you find your missing money? Yes, yes. Oh, don't hesitate to call on me. Uh, if you can find me. This is more fun than making campaign promises to the farmers. Right. There's a whole swamp out there. And we'd best be getting to it. With pleasure. start to give it back. Give it back? Have you lost your mind? It's a possibility. Head's gone. Anyway. This money will be just fine once we get it laundered, and I know just the lady to do that. Why, it's always the same. Folks running around dirtying things up, never giving a care till the grease and grime are simply awful. Then everybody expects it all to come out in the wash, only who's doing the washing, I ask you? Sometimes I do not understand life. For instance, you already washed that frog two moments ago. Heck, I ain't washing him, hon. He hates bathing so much that he churn up the water something fierce. Why, he's better than a machine. <laughs> Something do smell mighty delicious here. What's in this pot, Churchy? Well, I can't be certain, Albert, but Howland said it was a first-class slush fund. Slush, did you say? And first class? Hmm, nothing's better than a little slush with sugar and raisins. And in the absence of raisins and the sugar, why, I don't mind if I help myself to the slush by itself. Wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you going? 
No time. No time. Albert's running, and we're after him. Oh, gee. Out of our way. We are off to poll the populace. And keep an eye on who's running. And watch out for the dark horse, and watch out for Albert. That makes two candidates. Counting Pogo, that's three. Counting Fremont, that's four. Who do you guys think will win? We're not in business to answer questions. We're in business to ask questions. And we've got a lot of business to do. So long. Hey, wait a minute. Wait for me. Hey, Churchy, Howlin', wait for me. Oh, I don't care if they leave me behind. I didn't really want to know who's the candidate anyway. What difference is everybody chasing off in different directions, campaigning and candidating and running to conventions? What difference have they gone off and left me all alone? I always wanted to have the whole swamp to myself. I'm glad I'm alone. Glad, glad, glad. <laughs> knowed you wanted to be by yourself, I wouldn't have come over to invite you to supper. I got a mess of black-eyed peas and greens and bacon and apple pie, what needs help with, and I figured we'd do a little fishing first, just you and me down by the creek. Well, I'd be glad to oblige you, Pogo. I, uh, <laughs> had a chance to really go fishing for quite a while. I've been so involved in everything that's going on around me, but, uh, there's a good place down there to Oh, there's some bacon down there, right? I got a pole here. We'll just cut off that line. Everybody wants you to run for president. Seems like a good idea to me. You're at least as smart as any that have done it before. But I can see your point. You don't want to be president, right? Yep. And all those folks out there, they want you to be president, right? <sighs> That's about the way it is, Porky. Okay. Okay. It's a problem, hmm? Real brain teaser. You gotta have a feel for these things. Let's see. I know. There's only one way to solve this. I think there should be a vote. That's it. We'll vote on it. Hold on a minute. I'm not so sure. Yes, a vote will do it fine. Whatever the majority says, that's what you'll do. But, but, but I might win the election. That's great. Just think of it, winning the election. No, it isn't. 
then I'd be president. So I would, I would, I would lose. Wait a minute. I thought you said you would win. That's right. That's how I would lose by winning. Hold it. Hold it. You'd win so you'd lose. Is that what you said? You got it. Lose so you'd win. I suppose that means that if you won, you wouldn't win. Reverse of ice. I don't want people wasting their vote on me. I'm not a candidate. Okay. How about if we flip a coin? They should take a good hard look at whoever is asking for that one and only vote they have to give. I don't know, Pogo. If they look too hard, they might not vote for anybody. That'd be terrible. And besides, it's unnecessary. No? There are lots of good folks out there, and some of them would even make good presidents. But you're good folks, Bogo. No, Porky. I'm not a president. Whoa. I'm just a possum who likes to fish. You're more than that, Pogo. You're... Oh, you're my friend. Heck, now look what you made me do. I messed up my line. I'm sorry, Porky. And thanks. boys, it's on to the convention. We'll put Pogo across on the first ballot. Trust me. Has anybody seen Pogo? How are we gonna vote for a non-existent candidate? No problem. Folks do it all the time. Just close their eyes and go. That's right. Election's not a matter of who, but of how many. Importantly is that if everybody votes for none of the others, then our boy will win. It is purely a case of a vote for Pogo is a vote for none of the above. Hey, Churchy, what's going on? No time, no time. Howland, I've been meaning to ask. Don't bother me, boy. Ask someone else. I don't know the answer, and if I did, I wouldn't have time to stop and tell it to you. Grab that one over there. Hey, boy. Pack everything. Everything. Make haste. Oh, hey. We can't be late. Get Pogo. Let's go. Where's the candidate? Goodbye. Boy. Goodbye. Come on, hurry it up. Hurry it up. Find the candidate. We'll miss the keynote speech. I can't find Pogo nowhere, no way. No good weasel or possum or whatever he is and run off on us. We ain't got no candy. Hey, hey, y'all. Hey, in here. Where do you suppose a little swab run off to? Oh, forget him. We'll make it on the first ballot with or without a candidate. What do you mean, make it? On three wheels? Well, I'm not a mechanical genius, too, you know. Hey, hey, fellas. Woo-hoo. out there. Here's a wheel to take the place of the missing one. Do I got to do everything? Oh, go. Come on. The convention can't wait. Hey, hey, fellas. I'm, I'm locked in this thing. <laughs> Watch this. Now to give a shove to the starter. Wait, wait. Where's the steering wheel? Hey, Pogo! Pogo! What do you think I replaced Pogo. that missing wheel with? Pogo. Steer with a plier. Pogo! Goodbye. Why? Pogo! Pogo! Just give us another shot. Churchy's got the hang of steering with the pliers. We'll point her in the direction of the convention. The engine ain't catching cause a cylinder must be missing. Correction! The whole engine is missing! Uh-oh! Never mind! We'll make it anyway! On! On! We'll make it by gosh or by gum! I got a good grip on the pliers! Just shove away! It's all downhill from here! Hold it! Hold it! Goodbye! Bye! I think we're out of gas! Hello! Woo! Hey, y'all, I'm in here! Hey! Woo! Well, I never saw such a bunch. Now we have to start all over. What do you suppose happened to Pogo? Tell you the truth, I don't know. But he missed a first-class departure. Hello! Woo! I'm in here! Hey, it's stuffy in here! And Albert's socks don't smell any too good! Well, where have you been? Hmm. Why, 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 why? Our time has come, so here we go. Grab your stogies, turn your coat. It's party hats and power at convention time. 
six and six to stake their ground, make big decisions and fool around. We're gonna pin their ballots down and run them blind. Got to put the word out, we won't be undone. Our man is the alternative, an option of one. With loads of well placed money and lists of who we pay.
what we've got to do is make our candidate look good and the other look bad. We could keep them out of sight. We've got to use the old savvy, the know-how, the moxie, and mother wit. I mean, we have to act like the red-blooded pioneers who invented the tall corn, the square peg, the empty vistas of the TV screen. We are true patriots, true knight errants, blue-blooded boys of red, white, and true strife. We have to put a bloom on our candidate. We gotta sell our man. And selling cheap. We gotta run with the ball. Put our boy across the line. Knock him over the fence for a bases-loaded beer bottle blast. We must blow a note of purest and genuine unsimulated gold. A note that will alert the thirsty blood of a buying public. Arouse the hunger of a hundred million humble hearts. Flame the flaring passions of the man in the street. Any questions? Yes. What in the world do you put in your watermelon preserves? It's delicious. What are these? Campaign buttons for old Pogue Natch. I'm a goner. I ate one. I thought they were potato chips. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, uh... I'm poisoned. Help! Yeah, but they is potato chips, my dear sir. And if you like them, you'll just love the bumper stickers. Mm -hmm. ah. Oh, forget them symbols. They don't hold up more than a year or two anyway. Let's think up some hard-hitting promises. Might work. He could promise that the weather department will take a lesson from Detroit. You know, increase its product. Too dangerous. Can you imagine having to recall the entire month of July? My goodness. How about promising to give away free money to everybody? Yeah, yeah, hurrah, free money. Too late. Washington is doing that already. To everybody except us. Besides, all our funds shrunk in the laundry. <laughs> Don't look at me. I told you it would all come out in the wash. And it surely did. What we need are a bunch of commercials. We'll reach the people right where they live. In their TV sets. We'll put Pogo up there between the shaving cream and the dog food. So they'll stand out a little bit. Hold it right there. Ain't no presidential candidate what can get himself elected without a missus. Now, the American public can overlook the conspicuous absence of little nippers and such, but the absence of a first lady would be unconscienceable. Well spoken, and sadly true. And what's more, I've got just the candidate to be the candidate's wife. Who's that? Ma'am Zell Hepzibah. Terrific! Of course. Oh, gee. I can see it now on the front page banner headlines. Cinderella boy marries French mystery queen. Royalty comes to the candidacy. Those blue zazzled non compips why can't they leave well enough alone? Now, first of all, uh, we should build a Cleopatra's barge for Miss Hepzibah. Then we tow it 12 miles offshore, and she rolls up the Potomac, greeted by flamethrowers and a barrage of flowers. We whisk her to the White House, and there on the lawn is a Prince Pogo. Twelve miles? I don't know. Oh, it'll work. Will it? It sure will. Let's go tell the Mamzelle the good news. Why do you propose marriage to me for Pogo, and he knows of this nothing, eh? He's gonna be president. Can't expect a busy man to make his own decisions. Huh. Don't you want to be... First Lady? Oh, Pogo. Well, Pogo can't be president without a First Lady. Why first? Who is to be the Second Lady, or the Third, or the Fourth? How many, eh? Madam, please. <laughs> this, I do not agree. There'll only be one lady, you, and you'll be important. Why, when Pogo gets his picture on a postage stamp, you'll be right there on the back. Take this, you daughter. <laughs> A mite unpredictable, wouldn't you say? Yep. She usually serves peach. Man, this is all getting out of hand. 
I've been too easy letting folks twist me around their little fingers. Make me run for president. They thinks I can't fight back. But they is tangled with a red-blooded, two-fisted American boy. I'll show them I got spitting blood. I'll, I'll run away. Wow! Hmm. I wonders if Mamzelle Hepzibah likes the idea of getting hitched. Hmm. I'm getting out. Let all this blow away. Miss Mamzelle Hepzibah is sure to see the light and realize that I'm the one that's meant for her and her for me. But then how can she know? I never told her. How could I? I love her. Uh, love is painful. It's too much for my grumpy little mind. Now, what's that? I'll tell you what, Jimmy. Don't ask me. Stop swimming all the time. Let me go over this way. Let me go over this way. You seen Pogo? Albert's throwing a big fry in honor of Pogo's candidate yet. If you see him, pass along the word, will you? Will you follow me? A big fry, free food. You know, I think I can smell that fry from here. Mm -hmm. Pogo. Wait here because uh, he's absent. Long may he wave. Hip -hip -hip -hooray! Hip -hip -hip -hooray! I say, Albert, that sure does smell. Well, let's just leave it there. I couldn't agree more if it was said about myself. I'll show you all how to bake a soup quick as you can break a rake, Billy boy. Bake a soup? Bake a soup? Should that be bake a cake? Don't encourage him. It probably started out as a cake. Say, Albert, isn't that a plumber's helper you're mixing with? I ain't no snob. I'd even mix with a congressman's aide if I thought it'd help. And he probably has, too. Say, what kind of fool you think I am? Do I look like some kind of congressman to you? No, I'd say more like a senator. You take it back. That's outrageous. Can't just swamp up that kind of verbal proliferation. Let him alone, Churchy. He has more important things to do than worry about Congress. Let him finish cooking that whatever it is that thing they will. Mmm. May need a little salt. As a natural-born expert on the subject of eating, let me do a taste of that baked soup. <laughs> Nothing? Just like that? You should at least feel a little tickle. I don't know what you're all waiting for. It tastes perfectly funny. Ah! <laughs> you're right, Albert. Could use a little more salt. It sure is a shame and a scandal that we're doing this political dinner for the benefit of a candidate that isn't even here. You mean which isn't even running? Oh, the boy's running all right, namely away from us. Old Pogue's gonna build up his image for his followers, build up a stock of jokes so he can handle foreign dignitaries. What's jokes gotta do with foreign dignitaries? Everything. Now I think our boys should grab hold of some substantial points, like, for instance, uh, birth control. A candidate's got to have a feel for both sides. Only people what's been born can take sides on that issue. Issue sure is the issue of birth control. <laughs> As in, issue for it or against it? Exactly. With a special emphasis on the A. Especially if you're an owl or a turtle. You know, I never knew we had so much in common, Brother Churchy. If we get Pogo elected, we'll build a brand new federal government. Bigger and... and... bigger than the last one. Did I hear him right? Well, that's the way it works in politics. This government is bigger than the one before it. And that one, who was bigger than the one before it? Why, the first one must have been about the size of a pea. Better. Much better. Just fine. Just fine. Is, is it just fine? Oh, no! Is it my just boy! Fine? My free mom! Just fine. He fell into the soup! Oh, my dear boy! Mama's coming after you! Your 
tree mount. Inside the pot? No, Freddy, Freddy, it's the light bulb. A moment there, I thought I was going to have to stop cooking all over again. How are you doing? How are you doing, boy? Are you, you, you okay, Freddy, my child? Is it? Well, the fact of the matter is, I feel rotten. Fremont, tiny little friendlet, talk to us, boy. That's precisely what I'm doing. Something has come seriously unstuck in the boy's bean, and you is to blame. I know that I shouldn't have added more salt. Oh, Fremont, my boy, what have they done to you? Frankly, I don't know the they to whom you are referring. But don't you feel just fine anymore? Let's get one thing straight, you pea-brained excuse for a hairbrush handle. I never felt just fine, and have said it for the very last time. But what about your platform? I do not have one. I do not want one. And if I should ever find myself within 50 yards of one, I shall jump right off. Listen here, young'un. That's a much selfish point of view. You've got to have a commitment and perseverance. I think uh, that is to say, what she means is uh, you've got to do what your mama wants you to do. Oh, three mouths. How could you do this to me? I have done nothing to anybody and do not have a single intention in that way. Folks have planned and planned for me, but I am not interested anymore. Why don't they just leave me to be as I see fit? Oh, three mouths. From this point on, my words are my own. Are you coming, Mater? I knew it. I knew it. Things were bound to go from bad to worse. Fremont Bug has gone stark raving man. Oh, I don't know. The lad sounded sensible enough to me. Have you got a wheel loose in your flute? Fremont Bug telling the truth. Why, who could possibly believe in a boy who does a thing like that? Oh, all is lost. All is lost. Oh, I can't believe it. Why Fremont? Couldn't we have found anybody? Anybody would have been better than Fremont. I got stuck with him. Oh, no. There may be a way out. I've heard rumors, Monster. Rumors of someone who can help us. A good rumor is far better than a bad truth. Kind of someone is this? A specialist. A consultant of the first degree. Take that the third degree. As well as innumerable forms of torture and consternation. Sounds like you're talking about the internal revenue. No, 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 no. Not the IRS. That would be going too far. The specialist I'm talking about is Wiley Cap. There's a lost part of the swamp, a dark, evil place where the wicked critters hide out. Monster, this is truly a deserted part of the swamp. Monster, I have had an inspiration. Let's get out of here. We can't do that. Think of our public image. All right, I will. Okay, finish. Let's go. Not so fast. We must do what we came to do. Pogo must be found. Dead or alive. Who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Seminole Sam. Secretary and assistant to Mr. Wiley Cat. I am his personal confidant, uh, with an emphasis on the uh, fee. <laughs> I am Moster P. Mole. This is my account. Uh, I'm his associate, Mr. Deacon Mushrat. What brings you, gentlemen, to these parts? Two feet. <laughs> hmm. We'd like to have a word with Mr. Cat. Oh. Which word might that be? Goodbye. We have business to discuss. A business, is it? A transaction of the fair trade? Make that trade without the fair. Fair enough. My associate tells me that Mr. Cat may be available to serve as a consultant. Although folks say Wiley Cat is, how can I put it, 
out of the picture. As in demise, disease, or defunct. Uh, not so. Just uh, difficult to reach. How difficult? Say, ten dollars difficult? Uh-oh. No difficulty at all. Hey, Brother Deacon? Cross my palm, Miss Silver. I'll follow you anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. What have we here, boys? Wily cat! Uh, oh boy, boss. Good thing you showed up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've uh, arranged a, a fee, a retainer's fee. Oh, just for you, I've been the goal. Why are you all shaking so much? We thought you were dead. Would you stop shaking if you thought I was alive? Well, actually, as my associate started to say just a moment ago... Uh, good day. I thought you boys had a job for me. I suspect this job involves a pitiful possum named Pogo. Pogo? Pogo? Do we know a Pogo? I say, cat. How did you come to know that? It's my business to know. Anything wrong with that? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Wonderful. Perhaps we can do business after all. You see, the little swab is gathering support by leaps and bounds. I can't get into his undersized yet clever mind to figure his strategy. Getting into Pogo's mind is no problem. Putting him back together afterward might be a bit touchy, if you get my meaning. Actually, that uh, wasn't quite what we had in mind. <laughs> On second thought, forget that I said anything about mine. Uh, Wiley, if I may call you that, is that thing loaded? Oh, Betsy here is always ready. Spot a stranger sneaking across your back land and... Yay! Bam! Just like that? How do you know if it's friend or foe? Oh, you can tell that easy when you turn him over. But don't you miss or make mistakes? Miss? Never. Of course, now and then I might make a little mistake, but I get the job done. Load up. We got a job to do now. Hold on, cat. We've come here for advice, not orders. Well, sure enough. Here's some good advice. You do what I say when I say it. Reasonable. Very reasonable. Now then, let's go create a few early returns in the election. Real early. <laughs> Enough, no more, and, and, and goodbye. What do you think he meant by that? I'm not exactly sure, but he was much too definite to be taken seriously. You all think that boy was trying to tell us something? Hey, listen, all of you. This is madness. Pogo is gone. He's our friend, and we should join him. And forget all this election ludicrousity. Hey, Pogo, wait for me. Hey. This is 
You've gone too far. Now Porky's got the same speech rider as Pogo. Looks like they both got a 14-carat grouch on. Danger! Heavy! Disruption! Horror! Anxiety! Acne! Scram, rascals. We've got important problems to get ourselves into. Yeah, buzz off. Stop! Look! Listen! This is serious! Give the lads a chance. After all, out of the mouths of babes and other vermin. Oh, no, he's in danger. Mowing geek in the restroom. Not this minute. Old news doesn't mean snap. Look, that's the worst kept secret in the swamp. Dog catch a my tail. But now, they have help from Wiley Cat. Oh, is that all? You hear that, Chersey? They have help from Wiley Cat. <laughs> Admittedly, that is bad news, but nothing to become extreme about. And he's after all of Pogo's following. And friends. And advises. And Kim. Yikes! That is something to become extreme about. <laughs> no problem. I didn't mention alligators. <laughs> and alligators what his campaign manager type would be vice president. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> well, as I was saying, uh... Pogo may just have the right idea, what with getting out of the political arena and all. Mind, I'm doing this for Pogo's sake, not my own, you know. What with the burden of office to be being too much to bear at certain times, uh, like right now. <clears throat> Agreed. Let's get out of here. Come on, hurry it up. Let's go. Here comes a taxi. Look alive. Here it comes. I'm a wing and a prick. What are your rates? Oh, I'll say, uh, $20 an hour. What? Oh, <laughs> you kidding. I wouldn't give you more than 99 cents for the whole car. 99 cents? It's a deal. Look out, look out, look out. Uh, nah. I'm leaving. Wait for me. Wait for me. Where have you been? I've seen more action than a flower show. Get the gasoline gate. Well, that's on empty. Must be running on fumes. Yeah, mine. Get going. Hey, look over there. Pogo. Make haste, dear boy. The word is out that Mole and Deacon have contracted Wiley Cat to put the kibosh on the Pogo campaign once and for all. Glad to hear somebody's wised up. You don't understand. They're out to cancel your campaign ticket once and for all. Punch your light. Pull your plug. Zero out your final ballot. Erase your slate. Clap your button. Bounce your check. Snip your wick. Chop your bite. Check your hat. Okay, okay, I get the picture. Doesn't sound like too much fun to me. Now, uh, you stand on the running board and steers whilst I crunch down on the floorboards and mess around with the foot pedals. Crazy. Crazy? Well, let me tell you, don't be so uppity, Mr. Nominee. You ain't president yet, and this is no time to practice. Let's get out of here. Wait, all you gotta do is hop on the running board. Churchill'll be down here working the pedals while Stu steers, and Howland calls the shots. Go ahead. They ain't inviting me. No, maybe they just don't know I'm here. Hey, wait for me. Oh, they knew all right. There they go. Off for a vacation or something. Well, who cares? Having fun's a lot of trouble on a vacation. I don't give a fig. Well, now that's real thoughtful. They've come back to get me. And they almost did.
never heard of matchbook cover. Is it? Is it? No. sometimes, Porky. Just think of it. All these critters charging around, scheming, plotting, planning, trying to trick the people and trick themselves into doing what somebody else wants. Sure is mighty confusing to me. Ain't it to you? Porky, old friend, there is one thing in all of this that fills me with confidence about our country's future. What's that, Bogo? None of us will get elected. It is comforting. 